Hi, this is Scott Marshburn with eCabinets Tips and Tricks. This is part 5 on how to create a resizable octagon column. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a cutter with the same profile as this piece of molding to put on our molding that we made in the last video for our column. So be sure you stay tuned and see how I've done it. The way that I go about reproducing the cutter needed to make this particular base molding here was I just made, I brought a piece of base molding in to e cabinets and to part editor or cabinet editor there and I just went to moldings selecting the molding I wanted and put a length in and what I what I want to do is I want to take this into line drawing so what you do is you just go to uh, click on your line drawing um, icon there and you click on take assembly and you say OK and it brings it right into line drawing and what I want to do is zoom in uh, without changing the size of that actual part there because we're going to use that to compare by I want to get a, a rather large image here I'm going to click on my camera tool here and it's going to take a screenshot so you would click on that camera and then you would click save I've already done that you save it somewhere where you can find it easily and uh, sketch up here I brought the JPG image in and uh, locked it to the green and red and blue axis there the zero zero coordinates flat down on the table so to speak I just use my construction guide tool and put my guides uh, where I need them to create my straight lines just like so I went through and got all my horizontal and vertical straight lines set and then I just traced those lines now after I got all my um, vertical and horizontal uh, straight lines drawn the only thing I need to do is take my my arc tool and draw my arc and as you can see it wants to put a, a tangent arc in there and it's uh it's wanting to snap a little bit bigger than what the picture is calling for you could try that but what, what we're going to do is we're going to create this part now we need to scale it let me just get this image out of the way And I'm going to highlight all the geometry using my move tool. I'm going to move it to the 0, zero location. And I'm just going to make a copy of this just in case we mess it up. It's always good to have a copy to go back to if you need it. And what, what I need to do now is scale this. But before I scale it, I'm going to change the number of segments that's in this arc to 2. Now I can scale it because, and the reason I do that is, is if you scale it, you can't change the segments in the in the arc. It it grays it out where you can't can't change it. And um, I want to send it into e cabinets with these two points so I can create a true arc in e cabinets for our tool. So in order to scale this, I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to use my scale tool here. I'm going to go in the red and green direction. I'm going to enter a new dimension and I'm going to type in three quarters here in the red and four and a half which is the size of our molding and the green so there it scaled it and uh, the only thing you would do would be to put this arc back on here and remove the two lines and get my arc completely right there make sure it's all the way out to the to that point right there and now you would just simply export this into eCabinets and um, I have a plugin you would double click on this and go to tools I have a plugin export to DXF or STL and it'll ask you for the units I'm going to export it in inches and I'm going to export the lines and then you click OK and save it. Now remember, you want to name it, and then at the end of the name of the part, you need to have dot .dxf at the end of that. If you don't put the dot .dxf, it will not save it as a .dxf file. Now I already have that saved, and I actually have it already exported into eCabinet. So I'm gonna go back into eCabinets. I'm gonna go to page two here. I'm gonna bring that into the line drawing editor you can do that by clicking on this folder icon and you can go to um, wherever you got your file saved 
and as long as it's a DXF file you can load it in now it brought it in there I'm going to, to line these up to see how close we are so let me zoom out and then zoom in where I can see both of these and I'm going to just move this over without rescaling it now you can see we're not quite right there we are close but it needs a little bit of help and there's a couple of things you could do what I've done on this page here is I measured you got some nodes that you can measure on if I hold if I hold my control key down and put and hit M you can see the nodes that you can measure by and I pulled those measurements and um, in decimals and frac and decimals in inches and it's 0.5247 this way and 0.4287 that way so what you can do now is you can go back into SketchUp and you can modify this using your uh, scale tool and your move tool and you could get that even closer so that's what I've already done just remember now if you need to scale this arc any make sure that before you scale it you change the number of entities to two and you'll see why in just a second so go through that process until you get it tweaked just like you want it and just remember it don't have to be exact because we're going for an approximate reproduction here we're not wanting it dead on here's one here that I already done and I exported it into eCabinets and we can see just how close we are so I fine tune that thing and let me move it over and see how close we got it and as I get this even closer you can see that we are pretty much dead on I mean that's real real close for so what we're using it for that's perfect so what we're going to do now is we need to create those cutters so what I've got here is uh, I've got some cutters that I already made up but what I've done was I took this uh, part here or this part that we made and I took it over to the zero zero origin and moved it down so that I got my plunge already set and what we're going to do is we're going to keep just this section of this part of this uh, geometry here so you know I just came in here and I deleted these lines all these lines that I didn't need we're wanting this profile right here just this and I need to move that right to the edge the, the edge of this arc right to the edge of this so what I done was I went ahead and changed this to 2 get my entity info back up here and now I can move that with no problem right to the edge of that guide right there so clicking my move tool and moving it over till it snaps to the edge of that guide and then from that point it's just a matter of drawing in the rest of the cutter so I'm going to come right here and I want my cutter let's say an inch high maybe and then I can draw my lines we want it to be a little bit wider here so let's just go half inch wide there Let me get rid of this line. First, let me put a guide down here. I don't want to have a line on top of a line. So I'm going to erase that. Um, that line don't look like it's straight. So let me redo that one. And as long as I see that X there, I'm good to go. And it's saying it's to the end point and it put a face on it. So that all looks good. So basically what we got is our cutter right there. It's preset, it's got the plunge, it's got the offset already on there. And um, here's one that I already done and I already exported it into eCabinets. And it's the same process, export DXF, lines or inches and lines and save the file. Remember to put .dxf at the end of the file name. 
So let's go into eCabinets and I'm going to go into Shape Manager and I'm going to bring up that file. And I've got it right here, octagon base molding, and I'm going to open it. It's a DXF file. Now the only thing I need to do is create that true arc. Now if I'd have left that arc like it was in eCabinets, it would have a bunch of individual line segments in there. And that will work, but it just does not look good. You'll see all those lines in your part. So I'm going to create a three-point arc, and I got uh, object snap turned on, so it's going to snap to my lines here. As long as they're inside my pick box, it's going to snap right to there. And then snap to that point. You zoom in here a little more and snap to that point. Now I can go home. Let me zoom in where you guys can see good, and I'm going to delete these lines that I don't need. Now I have my cutter drawn up, and I just need to save that cutter. I'm going to click on my Create Tool icon. I'm going to click on my Geometry, and I'm going to click Next. Um, you can put a diameter in here, but you don't have to. I already got it saved, but you can save it wherever you want to. Usually you go to Users, Public, Public Documents. Thermwood eCabinet Systems and they have a folder called My Profile Tools and you can save it in a folder in there but I've, I've already got it saved and drawn up so I'm just going to close this um, no I don't want to keep any of the changes so you just go back to main now after you get your cutter drawn up and you can get rid of this and bring in the before we take this into part editor I want to go over a couple of things with you uh, when you're dealing with stretchers and, and any part as a matter of fact in e-cabinets you have an A side and a B side now in this case you would think that the, the profile would need to go around whatever is facing up in part editor but that's not always the case and the way you tell which side you need to put the profile on is that you could simply right click and go to edit material a side and you can click on the part right here this is our molding here and you can see that you got a yellow and a green color on this part the green is the a side the yellow is the b side and part editor the green or the A side is always facing up. In this case, what we need to do is put the profile on the B side or the back view. The A side in part editor is the front view and the B side in part editor is the back view. So I'm going to click cancel. I'm going to take the part into part editor and right now we're looking at the A side. We need to go to back view. Now we're looking at the B side. So I'm going to do a chain, a full chain. I'm going to click on this part right here in this corner and it's going to tell the cutter to go around in this direction. I'm going to click next. I'm going to select my cutter, click view, click OK. Let's go to front view and now we can look at the eyeball click on the eyeball there and it looks like it's on the bottom of the part but it's actually when we go back to main it'll be on the top of the part it's just because this particular stretcher right here the the A side is on the actual bottom of the stretcher so let's go back to main let's click yes keep the changes and there's the profile on the part so it's always a good good idea if you don't know for sure which side is the A side and which side is the B side to click. You can click on the actual part, right click, go to edit material A side, and then click on the part and it will tell you which, what you're going to see facing up. So in this case, this is up. So we had to go to back view to put our profile on. And that works real good, especially with stretchers because sometimes you know one side is the front and then the other side is the actual back so keep that in mind and if this video helped you 
please give me a thumbs up and you can if you have any questions or comments please post them in the comment section and as always please subscribe to my channel so you can get all the latest tips and tricks and thank you for watching and have a good day